Hi, this is Frank Taylor with my second episode of Nature in Your Backyard from West Point, New York today. I'm not in my backyard, but I'm in my granddaughter's backyard. And we're still talking about this willow tree. If you haven't seen my episode on how to identify black willow trees, go to my YouTube channel and check that video out first. So today I want to talk about how when you find the scientific name or the name of a kind of plant that doesn't end the story that only opens the story because now you can look up things about the history of the plant how it was used by Native Americans how it might have been used by settlers that came to America and you can also find out what organisms are associated with this plant lots of different organisms are associated with certain plants for example if you learn to identify milkweed well, then you can find monarch butterfly caterpillars because they're always on milkweed. If you find bindweed, then you can find tortoise beetles on them. And there's a really cool tortoise beetle that has an absolutely golden shell. If you can identify a locust tree, you can find locust leaf beetles. And there's so many associations between certain species and a certain plant that they've evolved together. So today I want to show you organisms that you can find on a black willow tree and the name of this organism it's a beetle it's called the imported willow leaf beetle and imported is actually part of its common name and i don't know if i've heard of any other uh, invasive species called actually with the name imported in its name why is it called imported well because it originally came from europe its life cycle what it eats, how it feeds, what is it doing on the willow, and its natural history will be discussed in this episode of Nature in Your Backyard. So hang on, here we go. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And there's a make this invasive. It's exhausting. It's not yours. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's so in many willow trees, if you find a willow, you're likely to also find the imported willow leaf beetle. They'll overwinter as adult beetles under logs in leaf litter and come out in the springtime just in time for the leaves of the willow to come out. They'll feed on those willow leaves after hibernating most of the winter, and then they'll lay eggs on the willow leaves themselves. The eggs will hatch out into very small larvae, grow into bigger larvae, pupate, and become adults. At this time of the year, it's about mid-June, you can find both adults, larvae, and eggs on the leaves at the same time. So let's take a look at this tree and see what we can find today. And here's one of the pieces of evidence that says this organism is here. This is a leaf that has undergone skeletonization. And skeletonization is caused by various things. But in this case, it's caused by organisms who eat all the leafy green, nutritious cells of the leaf first and leave behind the less nutritional veins. Here I just found an adult beetle. And the adult beetle's escape mechanism is when disturbed to promptly let go of the leaf and fall completely. Now you can see that this leaf has been eaten entirely. And the adult beetles, when they feed on the leaf, they chew right through it. And you can see the path that this particular beetle took as it ate through this particular leaf. Can you see the path he took? It looks like he may have started at one end, moved down, and moved around almost like creating a maze. So I'm moving around the branches here, looking for signs of damage. And there is the classic eaten through the leaf. And right below where it was eating, you can see the black, blue, iridescent, it's like a metallic looking beetle right in front of my thumb. And if I disturb him, 
what will he do? He'll probably jump. And in this case, he jumped onto my hand. And there is the imported willow leaf beetle in action. You can see that they're not very big. He's clearly a beetle, six legs, two antenna. And it's amazing to think that something this small can cause so much damage. By the end of a summer, a tree can almost have completely lost all its leaves by multiple cycles of the adult feeding, the larva feeding, the really young larva feeding. All stages of this organism feed on this willow tree and they'll have up to three generations, sometimes four generations in a year and all of them feeding on the plant and each generation getting bigger than the next generation. Here's another beetle I've located. And so knowing what kind of tree this is, I can go to it and find organisms that I know will be here, like this leaf beetle. And right next to it, you can see the skeletonization of leaves caused by its larva. This beetle will be eating big chunks of leaves and eat them right through. And here's the third beetle I've found in the space of just a few minutes. And you can see that on almost every branch, every leaf has been damaged already by one stage or another of this organism. This organism has actually been extensively studied because of the big impact that it has. Many invasive species have big impacts on our natives like this particular species of black willow, which is a native to the east coast of the United States. And these beetles did not involve with these trees. And invasive species often grow very fast. They reproduce very quickly. They don't have natural predators and they will cause a lot, can cause a lot of damage either directly to another organism or plant or by crowding out native species. Here's a group of larvae, probably 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, maybe 15 or 20 larvae, all grouped together, skeletonizing this leaf, all feeding on this leaf. And they will molt in order to grow as they are arthropods, insects. They have exoskeletons, and in order to grow, they must molt and uh, shed their old exoskeleton. Here on this leaf, and I'm holding it up against the bark of the tree for a better focus, is the larva. And you can see it's black, has lots of ridges. Doesn't really seem to have three body parts. It looks like it's all fused more into one. But I think you could probably make out that it's got three legs on each side. And it's here on the underside of the leaf to eat the leaf. And you can see places on this particular leaf where skeletonization has occurred. This is actually one of the larger sized larvae. So overall, these are pretty small organisms. And here are multiple stages of leaf beetle larvae. I'm assuming that they are all of the same species, but there could be other leaf beetle larvae here too. Um, but I'm assuming that these larvae are also that of the imported willow leaf beetle. And of course, if you wanted to really find out, I could keep these in a jar with some willow leaves uh, with ventilation and see what they hatch out to. So these organisms will go undergo complete metamorphosis. They will form a pupa stage before they change over to uh, adult beetles, which look very, very different from these. So two takeaways I'd like to, you to get from this video that we did on the imported willow leaf beetle is one, if you know the name of a plant, you can use that to find out so much more about it. You can find out its uh, uses in history, either by Native Americans or the settlers, or if it came from another country, maybe back 2,000 years, like the use of willow bark for uh, aspirin has been known for a very long time. The other takeaway is that invasive species, 
imported species, species that came from here from another country, often can cause us uh, lots of problems. This willow tree, by the end of the summer, may look completely gray. And it's amazing how organisms that are so small, when in large enough numbers, can devastate even a large tree like this. So thank you for watching Nature in Your Backyard. I look forward to seeing you at my next episode.